Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at the NAMM show in Anaheim, California with Colin McDowell from DSB. Welcome, Colin. Hey, Sam. Now, among the very interesting new products you're showing at this year's show is a particularly intriguing green box we have here, the APB16. Tell us a little about this. Well, Sam, the APB16 is the world's first programmable analog processor. It's controlled from plugins, just a regular plug-in in this session. You want a compressor? We got that. You want a limiter? We got that. You want a single saturator? Yeah, sure, that's coming. Whatever. But all the processing happens in the analog domain. There's just a control signal from the plug-in and, the, and the, the audio signal. They go into the box. They get put in the analog domain. They do their thing. They come back out, back over Thunderbolt, back to your computer. It's easy. If you know how to use a plug-in, you know how to use the APB16. So it's actually a collection of analog circuits that can configure themselves to do different kinds of processing depending on what plugin you load in your DAW, is that right? That's right. Excellent, and tell us a little bit about how that works. Ooh, well I can't tell you too much, but um, basically you know, every algorithm has a set of building blocks, and if you do it for a long time, and I'm getting older, so after like 20 something years, I'm like, wait a minute, we can so do this in the analog domain, so we gave it a shot, what do you know? It works pretty darn good. So we said, oh, how many channels can we put in the box and how sexy could it be? And it's, we're just getting started, folks. This is like, you know, this is like, we're riding the crest, the wave. You could be in at the ground floor. So what are the advantages to me as a mix engineer of doing this stuff in the analog domain? Uh, well, I mean, let's take, for example, the limiters in it, right? There's a lot of talk about true peak limiting where you take your digital signal, you oversample it by some number of times, put it through some specialized interpolation filter, find some inner sample peaks you may have missed, and then you downsample and do your thing. Well, if I made you a limiter in the analog domain, there would be no inner sample peaks because it's all in analog, and then it wouldn't have that problem. Or mm. would it? We're going to find out, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Excellent. So what, what other, as well as limiting and compression, what other kinds of processing can this unit perform? You know, if you want a single saturator, bam, we can do that. You want a multiband something, bam, we can do that. Did you want to have a big analog mixer sidecar thing right next to your console or control from a plug-in? Yeah, sure, we can do that. Wow, that sounds amazing. So um, what sort of uh, price point are we going to be looking at when this is available? That's a good question, Sam. Um, pricing is TBD. Um, well, I'll give you an analogy, folks. If you wanted to have one channel of this processing, like in a mid-range, like 500 series rack mount module thing, and you wanted 16 of them, which means two banks of them, right? That'd probably cost you around $10,000. And if it was a high quality thing, that might be more like in the $15,000, $20,000 range. Okay, we are not doing that kind of a price range. I assure you, it'll be under 10K. How far under 10K? We'll see. That's why we're at the NAMM show, talking to dealers, talking to customers, seeing what's what. Um, there will be an introductory price for a limited number of units for people who want to get on the ground floor. And um, when the information has been decided and available, we'll let everybody know. Um, there's a newsletter you can sign up for, it, specifically for the APB thing. If you're interested in like, getting a, you know, purchasing one of the first production runs, you can do that. And um, we'll just keep everybody in the loop as best we can. Wonderful. And any, any steer on when this might be available? Um, technically, we're done. But we have to do some compliance testing with Apple and Intel. It's going to be great. Heck, it's a Thunderbolt product. And we expect it to be available, I say Q2 2019 in the marketing lid, but it'll probably be somewhere between April and May we'll have the first production run completed and available. Wow, well we can't wait to get our hands on it. Thank you, Colin, looks very exciting. Thank you, Sam.